at Philquarter, Takaraka Bush Resort, Carnarvon Gorge. This is going up to the Art Gallery, which is only one of many, many Aboriginal art sites in the area. I don't even know if anyone's ever really counted the number of art sites in the area, but it's believed to be in the hundreds. Um, there are only three that are open to the public. Um, that's Art Gallery, uh, Balloon Cave and Cathedral Cave. It's, it's really unfortunate that they do get vandalised. And that vandalism has happened in, in, in several of these places, and hence they tend to be fairly guarded secrets where a lot of the Aboriginal artwork is. The walk into here is really beautiful in its own right. It's just just a superb place. It's uh, you're sort of getting up above the creek level a little bit, and so you tend to get a, a little bit different vegetation than what you get lower down. And the rock here is all part of the, the sandstone, it's all literally just compressed sand. The track through this area tends to be very, very sandy, um, almost like walking on a beach in some places, and that's purely because the sandstone is so soft that when you're walking on it, it actually erodes very, very quickly, it breaks back into sand. It comes from sand and breaks back into sand. And the, the big um, trees in the area are the spotted gums, a lot of the, in, in most of this area, the, the, in through the gorge, the spotted gums are very, very tall and very slender. And it's because they've had to go straight up looking for light rather than spreading across. At times you can see that the sedimentary rocks are kind of on an angle as well. What's happening there? Yeah, a lot of the, when you see it on, on the ones that are on the angle, um, the majority of that is simply because that is chunks that have fallen down off the, off the cliff. Um, the actual cliffs themselves, the layers are almost vertical, almost horizontal. You will see little angles within them. Um, that's just caused by, because of these river sediments. Um, when material is washed down a river, um, if there's a sandbar on the base of the river, the, the material will get washed over the sandbar and then it avalanches down the face at about a 45 degree angle. And um, you will see those 45 degree angles in many, many places in, in three here. Um, the art gallery is a, a very good place to see that too. Down, down in the creek, it's mainly basalt. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is that the creeks, the, the basalt in the creek, is because um, the, the sandstone is so soft that it gets broken up and eroded and washed out in the creek. But this basalt being much, much harder, much tougher, um, survives. And so when you get down to the creeks in this area, it's nearly all basalt that you'll see. There were two Aboriginal tribes in the area. There was the Karangal people and the Bidjara. Um, and this was sort of an overlap of the, the two people. And um, it was thought that they have both used the art gallery at some point. Unfortunately, we don't fully understand what the art gallery is, the, the full meaning of it. Um, there are different theories from different people, but uh, I don't know if we will ever know fully, unfortunately. Um, Age-wise, it's thought to be in the order of about 3,700 years old, some of the artwork here. They were, found it very difficult to date this area. Um, they dug down in the sand below the art gallery and found charcoal from old campfires. And by dating that charcoal, yeah, 3,700, 3,800 years was the oldest that they were able to get. So it's, it's not particularly old for some of the artwork in this area, but it is in remarkably good condition. Um, the artwork here is very, very protected. It's, it's in a, a big overhang and um, it's facing the, the northeast and most of our weather comes from the southwest. And so it's, it's very, very little rain ever gets in here. Below the art gallery you'll notice that there's virtually nothing growing. There's no, not even a blade of grass growing and it just shows how incredibly sheltered it is from the rain.
the, the paintings that you can see here are ochre stencil paintings. Um, ochre is just a, a dried clay, very, very heavily stained by iron, and they would crush it up into a fine powder, um, get a mouth, mix it with water and sometimes with an animal fat, um, get a mouthful of it and just spit it over the hand. Um, and you get that, that spray effect. Further along, um, it is mainly carving in the rock. And it, it does appear as though the carvings were older than the paintings. The paintings overlap the carvings, it's never the other way around. And so it appears as though they began carving and then at some point they've learned over painting and they've taken up a very, very different type of artwork altogether. So the carving is potentially very old. Yeah, it's, it, the, the carving is the oldest that's there. Yeah. There actually is a way of, of dating or getting a, a reasonable date with uh, ochre paintings, but it's never been done up here to my knowledge. No. There's a quite interesting little um, geological feature there. Um, it's There's a round hole, you can see there's several round holes in the rock and they're all in a perfect straight line. That is actually just, um, because this area is river sediments, it's just where there were a lot of logs and branches lying at the time. The sand has solidified around them and then the logs rotted away and just left the imprint. Unfortunately, you can also see where a lot of people have carved their names in the rock. Luckily, um, there hasn't been any recent vandalism that we know of. Many of the handprints, in some places you can see, particularly down low, very, very small children's handprints. In fact, there's some that look like they might be almost newborn babies. Some shapes are like emus as well. Yeah. Yeah, there are places where there, there's representation of emus feet. An emu has um, three toes and you can see carvings that clearly show these three toes of, a, of an emu. There's one place where there's actually looks like it might be a cluster of emu eggs. As we come back towards the entrance of of the art gallery, it is mainly ochre paintings and many different shapes of boomerangs. Um, there's stone axes on there. Um, there's shields and the the netting that you can see in some places is actually hand painted, and rather than stenciled, it's actually painted on, and that is thought to represent death. Um, when somebody died, somebody very important, the bodies were wrapped in, in netting. Yeah, the paintings have been dated at up to 3,800 years. You can see here clearly all the different shapes of and, and sizes of boomerang. Um, a lot of people thought that you know boomerangs are they, they think of the classic returning boomerang, but that's not generally what they were meant for. In fact, they were nothing more than probably a kid's toy. Um, most boomerangs weren't designed to return; they were just simply used as, as weapons and um, for you know throwing down very low and knocking a kangaroo's legs out from under them and catching them. I mean, they were never actually really designed to return. The ochre paintings are still in remarkably good condition and that's mainly, well, partly because the, they are so sheltered and so protected, but also ochre is not a paint. We sort of tend to think in, in the terms of paint sitting on the surface, but it actually gets right into the rock and actually stains the rock and becomes a part of the rock and uh, will, will last for a long, long time. And being just an iron oxide. It's uh, you know, very, very weather resistant and will last for thousands and thousands of years. Unfortunately, the day will come when these won't be there. They are slowly wearing off, but uh, it, it'll be luckily there for a long, long time.
So that's the art gallery. It's a um, very, very interesting place. It's very in incredible to be standing in the art gallery and thinking that there were people standing here doing these paintings three and a half thousand years ago. Uh, it really is a bit humbling when you, you, you think about that. Oh, it's nice, nice. 